Okay, folks, uh, we are back to study some more of our modern Hebrew uh, program. This is the uh, Rutledge uh, introductory course of modern Hebrew, and this is the Hebrew that's spoken in Israel. And so if you ever plan to go to Israel in the future, uh, and you want to be able to converse uh, with the Israelis, uh, although many of them do know English, uh, there might be some that don't know it. Uh, or if you want to be able to read the road signs or read a menu or anything like that, uh, this is the program that you're going to need. And so uh, last time uh, we worked on lesson Shior 21, and we went through these uh, little uh, dialogues here. We learned about our um, vocabulary uh, information here. Uh, and before I get started, I'm going to knock a couple of these out of here so that we can uh, have just our material. And so uh, here we go. I'm just going to go over this uh, vocabulary real quickly here. And uh, so you guys can follow along. Okay, so we have La Shevet. And we have Yoshev. Okay, so uh, La Shevet would be like to sit. We have Ratsini, uh, that means serious. And that would be like a masculine. Or Ratsinit would be like a feminine for serious. Okay, lie in bed. Uh, lishkov, Lishkov. Uh, so it uh, means to lie, to lie down. Uh, shohev, Bamita. Okay, so the Bamita is in bed. Shohev would be like lying in bed. And that would be masculine singular. Uh, Ledeber would be to speak. And then uh, Medeber is be like, uh, if you were to say who Medeber uh, Ivrit. Uh, he is speaking Hebrew. About telephone, Metzalzil. Okay, and that Metzalzil literally it means like ringing. But uh, a telephone is like the telephone. Okay, and then we have Roim Olam. This is basically uh, the name of a, uh, it's, a it's a news program. Uh, so it's like seeing the world news program. Okay, uh, so uh, remember we got down to the section here where they're going to talk about two separate words and they have sort of a, uh, they've got a different uh, way of using them. You have to know grammatically whether it's me'od or whether it's harbe. And so uh, here they are here, me'od and then harbe. So they're going to teach you uh, the proper way to uh, use these, um, to use these, um, Thanks. Okay, uh, welcome, welcome uh, to the Hebrew class. Uh, we're looking at Me'od and Har Bay in our uh, study here. So uh, you don't want to confuse Me'od with Har Bay. Me'od is an intensifier, okay? Remember that. It can be used before or after an adjective or an adverb. For example, oh my goodness, I'm getting a lot of people in this in these rooms here. Okay, uh, here comes another one. Can't help, I want to do that. Okay, all right. Uh, welcome, welcome. Let me see if there's any way to, uh, there we go. Okay, I guess I control that that way. All right, uh, so we're talking about uh, Harbea Mayo. Um, and uh, it can be used before or after an adjective or an adverb, for example. So in this, this case, we're talking about Mayo as an intensifier. Uh, so Zeph Binyan Yafe Mayo. Okay, so this, is the building uh, Yafe Me'od. So this is a beautiful, very beautiful building. It's like intensifying, very beautiful building. 
Okay, and then this is a proper name here, Sigal. So it would be like uh, S-I-G-A-L maybe. Uh, and then a Yelada Me'or. Okay, so she's a she's a, a small child, Yelda. She's a small child, she's a girl. We know that because of the hay. And then uh, Me'od uh, Nevuna. Nevuna is means like intelligent. She's not just a small child. She's me'od nevuna. She's very intelligent. So you see that intensification aspect there uh, in the me'od here in this particular sentence. So she's me'od nevuna. She's very intelligent. All right, how about this one? How to boost no sea meher meor, meher meor. So meher means, we know that means fast, right? But is it just fast or is it meher meor? Meher meor. Well, it would be, uh, it would be very fast. So uh, what are we talking about here? Uh, how to boost? No say so the, the autobus is traveling Meher Meod very fast. Meod also modifies the verbs uh, lehov and lirtsot. Okay, let me double check something here. We got people coming to this room like crazy. Uh, let me room people we got in here. Let's bring that over here. All right. Um, this is surprising. I normally don't have too many people join me for these studies. Uh, but let's continue now. We uh, we just did this one right here, and this has to do with the uh, meod. Oh, what's going on? Okay, we'll clear that up. Okay, so um, let's take a look at this. Uh, do not confuse meod with harbe. Meod is an intensifier. It can be used before or after an adjective or an adverb. For example, uh, we went through those. Now let's go down here. Meod also modifies the verbs uh, leho and lirtsot. Okay, so uh, leho is to love. Uh, you see ahav in there. And then Lirtsot uh, has to do, I think that has to do with Ratsa, to want. Lirtsot. Yeah. Lirtsot, to want. Okay, so let's see what they're talking about. Gadi ohev me'od kelavim. Okay, so Gadi, he likes, and this is this is the intensifier part, remember, me'od. And kelavim would be like dogs. So gadi ohev meod kelavim. So it's, it's really, uh, it's intensifying love or really likes. Uh, gadi really likes dogs. Vehu uh, meod rotse kelev. Okay, and he, uh, now though this is intensifier here, meod rotse. We're using rotse because we're talking about gadi, which I believe is is uh, masculine, and then kalev is the dog, a single dog. Oh, say so he uh, so basically we have vehume od rotse kalev, and so he really wants a dog. He really loves dogs, and he really wants a dog. And in each case, we see the the intensifier, the me od there. Okay, you see that intensifier word? It's intensifying uh, these uh, these verb forms here. Okay, all right, let's continue on down here. Okay, so um, now, now they're, they're gonna switch gears here and talk to us about the word harbe. Okay, so harbe on the other hand is a quantifier. So remember, Meod is an intensifier. Harbe is a quantifier. 
And the harbe, it precedes a noun. It's something like countable or uncountable. So for example, uh, harbe havarim would be like, uh, they would be like uh, many friends, I think, uh, many friends. Okay, or um, harbe cafe might be like uh, a lot of uh, books or a lot of coffee, a lot of coffee, harbe cafe. Harbe can also follow a verb when the object is only implied. For example, uh, let's see here. Um, this might be a proper name here, uh, Quarate Harbe. Okay, so um, this, I, I think it might be Miha, maybe. Maya. 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 Okay. So that's what that is. Maya. Okay. So a uh, Maya Coret Harbe. Okay. So um, this Coret, I think, uh, has to do with Ra. Uh, uh, and it, 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 uh, uh, it or rather, it, it has to do with Tere, which means to read what's written, Tere. Uh, so uh, Maya Kurit Harbe, she reads a lot of books. Uh, Hashutaf uh, Shali, and that's his roommate. Roe Televisia Harbe. Okay, so he watches television, and that's a lot. He watches a lot of television. My roommate. Now let me uh, double check that. Um, Roommate word. Ashuta Shelley wrote a televisia arbe. Yeah. Ashuta Shelley wrote televisia arbe. Yeah, Ashuta. That's right. Uh, so uh, roommate is Ashuta. That's this one right here. All right, so now we have made it to uh, Targila, which would be like exercise two. Okay, so Hashalem Bameod O Arbe. Okay, so in other words, complete. Complete these sentences, and you're going to complete them using either uh, Meod or Harbe. So you just have to remember that the, uh, the Harbe is a quantifier, so it's like a lot of something. And the mayode is intensification. It's intensifying an experience. Okay, uh, let me double check here. We've got just one participant, okay. What we got on the chat, anything, nothing? Get rid of those. All right, um, so, so uh, complete that meod o harbe. Okay, so uh, number one, we're going to have uh, gleet no set. Okay, so gleet would be like uh, G-A-L-I-T. Well, let's see how that's pronounced in specific. Gleet no set. Yeah, galit. Galit no say it. No say it. Okay, so galit. No say it. Uh, so galit travels blank from Mekonit Shalcha. She, she travels uh, by Mekonit in, uh, in her car. That would be uh, in her car. So um, you don't want, I don't think you're going to want to uh, uh, intensify because you're not intensifying the experience of the car because the experience of the car is just the car. But if you want to quantify, uh, let's say if, she, if you were to say she travels a lot in her car, then we might use harbe. Harbe uh, bemakonit shalcha. And I think this is correct. We'll check the answer key.
Galit Noset Harbe Bamekonit Shokha. So she travels a lot in her car. He blank Ohevit Linsua. So she really loves to travel. So that has to do with intensity, doesn't it? So we're going to put Meod there. Okay. Um, figure out where our. M a lot. Okay. May old. Okay. Okay, so uh he met old or he met Lin So she really uh, loves to travel. Zot Mekonitova. Zot Mekonit. So this car is good, but it's not just good, it's very good. So I'm thinking uh, if we're gonna if we're gonna intensify versus quantify. Uh, we're going to use uh, meod. Okay, now notice that in, in modern Hebrew, this whole lem, you would not see a dot on there. In, in um, classical Hebrew, it would look like that, and it's the whole lem. And it equals the O sound. Okay, so that's how we get meod. Okay, so let's, let me double check my work. We should have Harbe uh, and Meod Meod. Yeah, that's correct. Glit nos et Harbe bemekoni shacha. So Glit is she travels um, a lot bemekoni shacha in her car in her car. Uh, he may or have it lean so okay. So she, this is the intensifier, remember, it intensifies something and it's intensifying love or like. She very much likes lean so to travel. Zot mekonik tova me old. Okay, so uh, now she's talking about her car. Zot mekonik, this car, tova, and uh, we have to uh, intensify now. It's not just good, it's meod, it's toba meod. It's really good. Okay. Um, so uh, let's see here. Let's try number two. Uh, Ehud blank. Ohev lelachet baragil. Okay, so um, I think we're going to use the intensify one there uh, because he really likes to do something. Let's see if I can get this right. It's kind of a crooked uh, meod here. But uh, basically, this is saying Ehud uh, very much likes Meoda uh, Ohev. He very much likes Lelchet Baragel. He really like he really likes to uh, go on foot, travel on foot. Vehu holek Maher, and he walks Maher. This would be like uh, he walks really fast. So um, I think it would be met old again. Okay, so we should have may old may hold on our answer key. And that's correct, we do. Okay, so Ehud may old or Hevle Lachat Baragel. So Ehud uh, very much likes uh may old oh would be like very much likes. Lelachet baragel. Okay, so to travel on foot. Okay, vahuhulek uh, maher meod. And he 
walks, Maher Me'or is like he walks very fast. He walks very fast. Yeah, so this would be, uh, this is Holek Mahalak. Holek. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see here. Okay, yes, and he goes very fast. Okay, all right, so uh, I got that one. Okay, so number three here. Uh, let's see, Birhov Shelenu Ain. Okay, so on the street belonging to us, there is not uh, Birhov. I'm pretty sure that means on the street. Birhov Shelenu Ain. Yeah. Yeah, Berachov. Okay, so Berachov Shalano in. Okay, so uh so on the street belonging to us, there is not blank Makoni. So remember uh that the um the Harbe one is a quantifier, right? So we're gonna put there is not many, there's not many cars. Berho, Shalano, Ain, Harbe, Mekonit. Okay, Vain, and there is not blank Ra'ash. There's not a lot of noise. So that's probably going to be um, a quantifier, too. Okay, so ve'en har ra'ash zef tov. Now, in this case, uh, he likes the fact that the uh, road is quiet. It doesn't have a lot of cars. Ain har be'mekonit. There's not a lot of cars. Ve'en har ra'ash, and there's not a lot, not a lot of noise. Uh, and and zef tov. And so we want something that intensifies. He really likes this. So we would use me'od. Okay, so we should see harbe harbe me'od on number three. And there it is. Berachov shalano ein. Okay, so on the street belonging to us, there is not harbe makonit. That would be like many. Cars. There's not many cars. And there is not many or much noise. There's not much noise. This is good, but it's not just good. It's intensification good. It's really good. Okay. All right. Uh, let's try uh, number four. Uh, radio. So I uh, listen to the radio. Uh, I listen. I'm listening, or I'm listening on the radio. Blank. Uh, so that would be. Uh, I listen to the radio, and we have to use the one that is. Um, it's quantifying. So uh, I would say. I would say in this case, it would be Harbe. So I I listen uh, to the radio a lot. I listen to the radio a lot. Ani blank lo ohev lir o televizia. Okay, so I don't like uh, watching lir lir ot. That comes from ra'a, which means to see uh, televizia. I don't like watching the television. So uh, in this case, uh, we would have. Uh, we could say um, uh, mayot here because it's intensifying dislike. I really don't like. Uh, so mayot lo ohev. I really don't like. Uh, 
Okay, so uh, So I really don't like uh, uh, listening or watching. I really don't like watching the television. But what does this person like? Well, they like Ani Shomea Radio Harbe. I like to listen to uh, a lot of radio. So we should have uh, Harbe and Mayo there. Let's see if I'm right. That's correct. Uh, Ani Shomea Radio Harbe. So uh, I listen to the radio a lot. Ani Mayo Lo Ohev. Okay, so I, uh, this is intensification. Mayo Lo Ohev. I really don't like. I really don't like. Lir Ot Televisia. I really don't like to watch television. Okay, uh, let's see here. What I'm going to do real, one real quick here on this one. Anisho Mayo Radio Harbe. Radio That's right, Shomea. Okay, so it's assuming it's assuming the Shomea is masculine singular. Yeah, obviously singular because we have ani. Okay, you guys see that? Okay, uh, so now number five. Uh, Zef Binyan Gadol. This building is big. And so um, if we're talking about this building, it's just one building. We're not, we're not quantifying. We're not saying a lot here. That wouldn't make sense. So what we're going to do is we're going to intensify the bigness of the building. And in order to intensify the bigness of the building, then we would use Mayo, right? So Zebinyan Gadolomeo. Okay, so this building, it's really big. It's really big. Uh Yesh Babinyan, there is in the building blank. Look at that. Misradim. Misradim. I think the Misrad, uh, I think might be offices. Let me double check that. Misradim. Misradim. Okay, so now, now we're talking about many offices here. So now we're getting into the realm of quantifying, aren't we? We're getting into that realm. So obviously, uh, this is going to be using Harbe. Okay, so we should have, in number five, we should say, we should see Mayod and Harbe. Okay, so we have Zef uh, Binyan Gadola Mayod. So this building, it's big. It's not just big, though. It's intensity big. It's Mayod. It's super big. It's big, big. And then Yesh Babinyan. So there is in the building Harbe Misradim. There is in the building uh, many Misradim, which would be many offices. Okay, number six. Ani blank. Uh, no, it's going to be Ani. I think it's going to default to Rotse. Uh, Lila mode. Po. Okay, so I blank. Uh, Rotse would be like want. Lila mode. Uh, it's like to study, I believe. And then Po is here. So. But basically, I think we're going to use the intensity one, which is Mayo. So it's like saying we really want to study here. So Ani Mayo wrote a little mode po. Okay. Ani Mayo wrote a little mode po. Yeah, I really want to study here. Okay, so it might be talking about a university, maybe. Okay, say so this. Uh, now, that goes together. 
And that's like a school. It's like House of Books. Zeth by Itzaperto. Yeah. Yeah, bait sefer. So this is like a uh, noun pair. This is a pair here. This goes together. Bait sefer. This, this word by itself would be bayit, but when you pair it with another noun, it becomes bait sefer. Okay, so zef bait sefer tov. And it's not just, they're, they're, we're only talking about one school, right? So we're not quantifying here. We are intensifying. So what are we doing here? We're going to put me'od. Okay, so we should have ani me'od, rotse lila mod po, which would be, uh, I really want lila mod to study po here. Zef beit sefer, this school, told me'od is like really good. So that's what we should have for number six. Anime od or rot se lila mod po. There it is. You see the intensification, and that goes with the verb, which is want. Uh, lila mod to study here. Ze beit sefer tov meod. Okay, so we notice how this this tov meaning good is really good with the addition of the meod, uh, which intensifies the goodness. All right, so that completes uh, number two. So now uh, we have uh, some more instruction here. We have Targil three and Targil four uh, before we get to uh, lesson. Uh, before we get to uh, lesson twenty two, which obviously would be another day because this is a lot of material to get through. So let me see if I have any comments or anything on here. Um, okay, uh, so let's continue on here. I don't see anything. Uh, I did have some people come in. I, I had one individual decide to just pick up their pen and draw around on the material. Uh, but folks, if you do come in to the room, just listen, just listen respectfully. And if you have a question, put it in the chat box. And I get that chat. And then when I get through what I'm talking about, I will address that question. So if you're out there and you do want to come into the Zoom room, I welcome you, but I welcome you if you are to sit here respectfully and not write on the board. That's, I mean, you wouldn't do that when you were growing up in high school. Would you take a piece of chalk from the hand of the teacher without them asking you and just go right all over their work? This is very rude. So whoever did that, uh, uh, your mommy and daddy didn't teach you very well. So that's this, this is the appropriate way to handle classroom situation. All right, so with that being said, let's go on here. Uh, Milet, I saw it. Okay, so. Take a look at this here. I think this is a uh, chaychas. Yeah, that's right. Milet hayachas et. Yeah, milat. There it is. So that's almost like uh, M I L A H T. Milat hayachas. Milat hayachaset. Hayachas. Milat hayachaset. Like hayachas. Let's see. Hay. Ya. Has. <laughs> it's almost like that. Hayachas. Et. And so it's like uh, the preposition the, the preposition the. Uh, let's see here. Milat hayachas et. Yeah. Okay, so it's happened to do with a preposition. Okay, so the preposition et precedes a definite direct object in verbal sentences. 
What is the difference between the direct and indirect objects? Take a look at the following sentences. Okay, so number one, we have uh, Ori Ohe. Uh, let's see here. We have um, this looks like uh, Ori Ohe Abu Kude. Uh, avocado. Avocado. Yeah, there we go. This is a transliteration. Avocado. Like this. Okay. Uh, Uri Ohev Avocado. So Uri likes avocados. Uh, Iran uh, Medeber. So Iran speaks im with Ima Shilo, with his mother. The Shilo means. Uh, it's like uh, belonging to him. And so it has to do with Iran. And so he's speaking with Im, Ima, with his mother. Okay. So uh, we have a direct and indirect. So probably the direct that they're talking about is this right here direct object, avocado. And then the indirect would be uh, Iran is speaking with his mother. Okay. I think that's what they're getting at there. In the first sentence, avocado is the direct object since it is the immediate object of the action. It answers the question, what does Yuri like? It is linked to the verb directly. No preposition is needed. In the second sentence, uh, imashalo is an indirect object. So that's, that's his father. It's not pointing directly to her. It's really putting the emphasis on him, but it's mentioning, or not the father, but the mother. It's mentioning the mother. And so the mother is an indirect object. It is not what Iran speaks, it is with whom he speaks. So remember that, with whom someone speaks is indirect. An indirect object is linked to the verb with a preposition. So in this case, im, that means with. Okay, so when is a noun considered definite? Okay, so when it is preceded by a definite article. Okay, so. Uh, in other words, if you were to say ha avocado or uh, ha avocado, it would be like the avocado instead of just avocado. Okay, so uh, let's see. When is preceded by a definite article? So that would be, uh, uh, let's see. This is the newspaper. Yeah. A yelled, a itone, haze, which haze is kind of like the this, like the this, haze. Yeah. Jose. Yeah, Jose, the, this. And so uh, this now this the word you're you're paying attention to here is etone. This is newspaper. And then yell yelled is child. It's like a male child. And notice how the definite article is affixed on each of these. Okay, so the definite article, this hey, it equals the. It makes something definite. Okay, so when is a definite uh, semicolon? Let's see, when is it is a definite semicolon? Okay, so we have uh, Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah, that's what that is, Rosh Hashanah. Okay, so that's like the head of the year. Meonot uh, student team. So it's like excellent. Excellent uh, students, how student team. May a note, may a note, excellent student team. Let me double check that. May a note, a student team. Yeah, uh, dorms, that's right. I got that word um, confused with another one. May a note, a student team. So it's like student dorms, okay? Student dorms. Let me take a look at this uh, semicolon. Smichut. Smichut. Yeah, smichut. Okay, construct state. Construct state. That's what we're looking for, the construct state. Okay. So uh, when it is a definite construct state, 
All right, so when it is a proper noun, so we have Hagit Yerushalayim. Okay, so Hagit is the name of a person, so that's a proper name. And then Yerushalayim is, uh, is, is, is a city name. Okay, it's a city name. So, uh, so in other words, we're talking about when nouns become definite. Okay, so if it's a proper name, then it's definite. Because if, if you say, uh, I went to eat with Bob, then uh, that would be different than saying, I went to eat with him. Okay, uh, so because you're actually naming proper name Bob, so that's in itself is definite. Okay, when it has a pronoun suffix. Okay, shami, uh, shlomech, shlomech. Okay, so that's right. So this these pronoun suffixes. So for example, this is taking off the name uh, the uh, shem, which means simply name. This is like the construct state. But when you add a, uh, a a suffix to it with the yod, then it becomes my name. Oops, my name. Okay, and same thing with this one right here, shlomech, shlomech. So, uh, or it could be shlomcha. Uh, but uh, basically, what it means is uh, you've got the construct state here, which is shalom. Okay, but you are adding a suffix here, and usually it could be like this, shlomek, or it could be like a kamets, shlomka. And basically what that suffix is, it's you something, whether it's uh, masculine or feminine, okay? Masculine or feminine. So when you, when you put it all together, let's say shlomka, it's like your piece, okay? Shlomka. Shlomcha. Yeah, Shlomka. So if you were to say uh, Mashlomcha, literally uh, that would be like a greeting. Mashlomcha, how are you, right? Mashlomka. Yeah, how are you? Okay, but that would strictly be for a boy, a masculine, that would be, or for a man. If you were to say mashalom ka to a man, that would be proper. You would say, how are you? Now, in other words, literally it says, how is your peace? That's literally what it's saying there. How, how about if you were to say ma shlomech? Well, that would clearly be to a woman. It'd be female. And you would be, uh, you would be asking her, how is your peace? How are you? Okay, so in those cases, it's definite. Uh, lastly, the words Abba and Ima are considered definite, even though they do not take the definite article. Well, because we only got one mother or father, right? One mother or father, unless you're part of that LGBTQ baloney going on out there, uh, which doesn't have any impact on grammar. Okay, so we're just talking about when are nouns considered definite. And there's several uh, situations, one through five whereby nouns become definite, okay? Uh, okay, here's a note. Languages, as well as other fields of study, are not considered definite. Well, because there's a lot of people in mathematics, there's a lot of people in, uh, you know, physics. Uh, there's a lot of people, uh, there's a lot of languages, a lot of different languages. Okay, take a look at the following example. Okay, so uh, this looks like Delilah. Shota uh, Cafe. Okay, so Shota, I think, is drinking coffee. Delilah is drinking coffee. Delilah Shota Cafe. Yeah. Laila Shota Cafe. Uh, it's, it's a Dalit. Dila Shota Cafe. Dila. <laughs> it's not Delilah, it's Dila. D I L L A H. 
Dila. That's the name of a girl. I've never seen that before. Dila Shota. Now, why are we using Shota instead of Shote? Because it's a girl. Shota Cafe. So uh, Dila Shota Cafe, she's drinking coffee, right? Dila Shota Cafe. Okay, so the object is direct, but not definite. There is no et. Okay, that's right. So uh, the coffee is uh, basically, it's not definite because there's all different kinds of coffee. It's not, uh, we don't know whether it's Colombian coffee, whether it's, uh, oh, I don't know. Uh, any. Uh, I, I'm not a coffee connoisseur, so I don't know all the different kinds of coffee, but um, it's not definite. It's just any coffee. It just says coffee. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Uh, ata kore et aiton. Okay, so ata you are uh, kore is like um, reading et ha iton. So it's like that et there definitely makes that definite because you're not just reading a newspaper, you're reading the newspaper, right? You're reading this newspaper, okay? And so, atakore uh, et hatiton is uh, you are reading the newspaper. Haiton et haiton. It's not just any newspaper. It's that newspaper. It's the newspaper. Okay, so the object haiton is direct and definite. Okay. All right. So anigar babayikatan. Okay. So I am dwelling in the house, but it's not just any house. It's a katan house. It's about Babait Katan. It's probably Babait Katan. It's like a small house, right? Anigar Babait Katan. Yeah. Anigar Babait Katan. Oh, it's Babait. Okay. Anigar Babait Katan. Babait Katan. Okay. Babait Katan. Okay, uh, Bavait Katan. Okay, so Bavait Katan. So it's a small house. Okay, notice the gar means to dwell. And that's that's definitely masculine singular. Okay, so if it was gara, it would be feminine singular. So we know that the ani is masculine and he's singular. Okay, so the object is indirect. And there is no et there. Okay, so this would be uh, indirect because there's a babait katan. There's lots of little houses out there. It doesn't say the little house. It says it says just simply uh, in a small house. All right, David. Uh, let's see. Gesh et dila dila. That's an interesting one there. David Bogish. Let's see what that is. Meats. That means meats. David Pogesh. Pogesh. David Pogesh. It's with a pay. Et Dila. Let's see here. Dila. It's probably Dila. Oh, it's Dahlia. Dahlia. David Pogeshet Dahlia. Yeah, Dahlia. Okay, so this isn't, um, it's not this. Wrong. It's Dahlia. Dahlia. Okay, that's right. Sometimes it's difficult to get these proper names because they're not typical Anglo-Saxon names. They're not, they're not uh, English names like Peter, John, Paul. Sometimes they, they throw some of those in there. But this is clearly Dahlia. Okay, so David uh, Pogash et Dahlia. So David meets Dahlia. David Pogash et Dahlia. Uh, and so it's got to be, uh, the object is direct and definite, proper noun. So Dahlia is the name of a girl. And it uses the et to determine it's this, this specific dahlia. Okay, uh, Yaila lo medet. Okay, so this is the girl here, clearly. Feminine, singular. And lo medet is, means, uh, has to do a study. Im hagit. Okay, with hagit. Yaila lo medet im 
Geek. Okay, so uh, the object is definite, but not in, but not direct. There is no et. Okay, so because she's studying with Hagit, it's uh, it's not direct. She's studying with her. Uh, okay, all right. So those are interesting uh, things there. They got the following verbs typically take an et when followed by a definite direct object. Okay, so look at these verb forms: leho to love, leho the to eat, lick. To, uh, that one I have to look up, Lichto. Lichto. To write, that right, it comes from, Lichto. yeah, it comes from Katav. Lila mode, I believe, has to, to do with studying. Lila mode. Yeah, or learning, yeah. Lichod. Okay, then uh, look at this one, least poor. I've heard that one before, but I can't remember exactly. Least poor. To count. Least poor. Yeah. A lot of shot. I wonder if that's to do. I bet you that's to do, to do one. A lot of shot. Yeah, that's right. Assault. It comes uh, a lot of salt, rather, not shot. A lot of salt. It comes from asa, which means make or do. Uh, now, this is, uh, look at this one here. Uh, leaf. Gosh, leaf gush, leaf gush. Me, that's right. Leaf gush. Leaf gush. Leaf gush. Okay, so leaf gush means to meet. Lick row, that comes from kara, which means uh, to read, I believe. Lick row. Yeah, that's right. Lick row. Lick row. Uh, lear alt comes from ra'a, which means to see, right? And then, uh, lear sot, I think that comes from ratsa, which means to want. And then, uh, lishmoa means, it comes from shema, which means to hear or listen. Lishmoa. Yeah. Lishmoa. Yeah, lishmoa. All right, uh, so basically uh, notice here that the following verbs typically take an et when followed by a, a definite direct object. Okay, so now we are down to Targila 3. Uh, let's see, we have... Um, looks like a Bahar Bain et. See what this is. Bahar bin et. Okay. Bahar bin et. Okay, so choose. Bahar bin et. No, it's bain. Still not getting that right, are we? Bain yeah, bain means between. I remember that now. It means between. Okay, uh, bahar means choose. Choose between et or no et. Okay, so in other words, uh, basically you're going to have to uh, put a zero or a et in there. It's going to be a challenging one for me. I hope it's I hope it's challenging for you guys too. Now let me see what kind of time I've got here. I usually try to keep these down to an hour. Okay, I've got a little bit of time here. All right, so let's just let's just take a look. At, uh, I might not finish this this time around, but I'm just going to kind of get into it and just see what they have. Okay, so number one, they have David Shoma. So David listens, blank radio. And uh, I think it's going to be, um, I think I'm going to put an et in there. Et. Uh, eight. It's actually David Shoma, uh, eight radio. Now let's see what that comes up with.
David Shoma, it radio. Shoma. It looks like, uh, yes, yeah, definitely Shoma. Yeah, that's right. David Shumeret Radio. David Shumeret Radio. Shumeret. David Shumeret Radio. Yeah, it radio. So David is listening to the radio. So that's like David is listening to a radio, to the radio. And just just to see what they've got there. Uh, no, it's just saying David is listening to a radio. They've got there. David is listening to a radio, David Shomea Radio. Okay. All right, let me try another one. Maybe I have better luck with this one. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ani Ro A. Okay, so I see blank. I had to shout a televisia. Okay, so I see uh, the news on the television. I had to show is like the news. But on the television. So I see. Let's see here. I'm going to show it by television. So it's going to be, this is going to be an 8 1, I think. Okay. I need row 8. I don't have show by television. Now, what would happen if we didn't put that in there? I need row A. How to show it by television. It will happen if we put the eight in there. I see the news on the television. Get on the show television. So I watch the news on television. Okay, yeah, that's what they've got. Aniro a at the show the television. So I watch. And this, this is not translatable. It's basically, it, it directs your attention to what is he watching? Well, it tells you that it's the news. Okay, so basically this, this basically is a director. It tells you, because uh, Hebrew is not in the same linear fashion that English is written. Uh, words can be jumbled around and you just have to figure out where, uh, what, what's, what's the object of being watched? Is it the is it the television being watched or is it the news? So at how to show the televisia. Okay, uh, let's see here. Yeah, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna leave off here. And try to work that out uh, with you guys. Get rid of this here. Delete. Get rid of this here. Delete. Okay, uh, you came in at the end of the study, Jose. Oh no, oh no. Uh, so um, I'm gonna close up here. I'm... And, um, but um, you're welcome for, for uh, future studies. I didn't uh, have... What is, uh, no, what is this? I'm sorry. Transsexual, asexual, fuck sexual, little unsexual, transsexual, fucking with. Oh, oh my God. Please don't put that in. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure what that person was going on about. But anyway, um, I'm going to close this off here. So this is a production of Hebrew Messianic. 
Israel, it's kind of exciting around here. We get new people that you don't know come in. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so you go to www.hmisrael.com, and uh, we also have Sabbath services, and that's 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, USA Time, and you can get there by going to uh, theyahad.com, okay? Uh, you get into our Sabbath services. We have a rotation of different teachers. I believe that uh, Brother Guy Smith is going to be presenting... Uh, the second installment of his prophetic uh, teaching series uh, regarding the regathering. And so you don't want to miss that. Uh, so uh, make sure you're there at that website, uh, the Yahad. Okay. Uh, also, um, so what else can I think of here? Um, oh, if you find uh, these interesting, uh, please drop me a donation. Uh, I'm not making any money on this. I just use the money to buy materials and keep the Zoom room running. Uh, so you can use Cash App, Cash Tag uh, for any donations. And it's Micro Messianic. You see there, you put a dollar sign in front of it, put Micro Messianic. Uh, you can reach out to me at shul at hmisrael.com. Here's uh, the hmisrael.com website. Uh, so uh, we're happy to uh, present this material to you. I hope that uh, you have a wonderful day, and uh, I will say uh, shalom, shalom.